my topic is on soda. So, according to an article published in 2009 by doctors Babby, Jones, Yu, and Goldstein, who are all professors and writers for the UCLA Center for Health Policy in 2009, the average 20 ounce bottle of soda contains 17 added teaspoons of sugar, while the recommended daily intake for soda for an average human is five to nine teaspoons, making so one bottle of soda about 243% of the daily recommended sugar intake. Now, soda is consumed on a daily basis by many Americans or many people all over the world despite these detrimental health effects. Now, I can say with fairly certain confidence that everyone in this room has had soda at one point in their life, and I'm sure many of you probably drink it on a daily basis, which I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Just want to relate that to everyone. Now, I feel I'm credible to speak on this because I'm passionate about like, health and nutrition, and I actually gave up soda in my eighth grade year, and I haven't drank it since just because I've done all the research on why and how it's so bad for you. Now, big soda companies are being fought right now against due to the detrimental health effects, effects on people, despite the prominence of soda throughout history. So today, I'll provide you on a history of the soft drink industry research as to why and how it is so unhealthy and what is being done to limit consumption. So soda was, according to Mary Bellis, an award-winning invention writer in her 2017 article in ThoughtCo.com, soda was once believed to actually have health benefits and even curative powers for people. It was first sold in pharmacies and the bottling industry became popular when people wanted to take it home with them. This became popular in the late 1800s when the cola flavor was first invented, closely followed by Dr. Pepper, which was invented in 1885 by Charles Adderton. Now, according to Vartanian, Schwartz, Brownell, who are all professors in writing for the American Journal of Public Health, in an article published in 2007 in the American Medical Association, stated that in 1942, there were articles released stating how unhealthy soda consumption is for you and that sh because of the high sugar content and that consumption should be limited. And in 1942, the annual consumption for the average person was 98 ounce glasses per year, while in 2000, the same survey was taken and annual consumption rose from 90 to 608 ounce glasses per year for the average American. Just a little. This this is just a little uh, ad that says it promotes active lifestyle, boosts personality, and gives body essential sugar, which is why you should start cola earlier in a child's life. And this was in the 1940s when that was released, kind of when soda started becoming popular. Uh, so now I'm going to discuss why it's so unhealthy to consume. According to get ready, doctors Xavier. Sriramananam, Daiwalkar, Sivaganam, and Setharaman, who are all doctors and writers for the ASEA and Food Journal, in 2007, in an article written by those five men, uh, stated that in 19, up, leading up to 1990, soda was made with sucrose, which is a little bit more natural sugar, still not healthy for you, but not quite as bad as in 1990, it was switched to being made with high fructose corn syrup, which is one of the leading causes to the obesity epidemic. Um, in this article, they also stated that children and adolescents have consumed 50% less milk in the last two decades because it has been replaced with soda, which that has entailed led to an increase in wrist and arm fractures in children and adolescents. Uh, in addition to arm and wrist fractures, there's also been a high deterioration of tooth enamel uh, due to the low pH and high acidity in soda because as sugar goes up, the, as does the plaque growth in people's teeth, so it's causing people's teeth to rot really early on in their life. And so this, here I have a graph that shows, like in, in the 1970s, for here's boys and here's girls, the white, it's kind of hard to see on here, but the white is milk consumption, which is higher than soda, but then in 1994 through 96, soda is like 
double milk on both of them. So that's just kind of a like a visual on how much the milk and soda consumption have been swapped. So what is being done to stop soda? Well, according to James Krieger, a professor of medicine at University of Washington, in an article written by him in 2016 in Healthy Food America, discussed that Philadelphia is working to pass a sugary drink tax, which is similar to the tobacco tax today. And it stated that 64% of people aged 18 to 34 are in support of this tax. So people are in support of putting an extra tax on sugary drinks. And according to Margot Sanger Katz, um, a journalist for the American Healthcare, or an American Healthcare journalist for the New York Times, wrote in 2015 that over the past 20 years, sales of full calorie soda in the U.S. have plummeted by more than 25 percent. Soda consumption, which rocketed through the 60s and the 90s, is now experiencing a serious and sustained decline. She also stated that there will always be soda, but I think the era of it being acceptable for kids to drink soda all day long is passing slowly. She gives much of the credit of this to the public school districts because it's no longer being provided in many school districts, and like it's not being sold in cafeterias and there's no vending machines. So today I was able to provide you on a history of soda, reasons for why it's unhealthy and what's being done to stop it. So I think it would actually it would obviously be beneficial for the health of people in our society and future generations if we limited the consumption of soda.